This is the first in a series of video tutorials on creating Rhino plugins that use the UMI framework. In this first tutorial, we'll be learning about consuming UMI inputs, specifically the buildings defined in an UMI project. These tutorials assume a basic knowledge of programming in C-sharp and how to create a Rhino plugin. Before starting them, create a simple Rhino plugin using RhinoCommon with a single command that doesn't do anything. There are good guides for this on McNeil's website, and the tutorials will begin from this point. The plugin we will be developing is a simple transit carbon plugin to calculate the carbon dioxide released to the atmosphere by people traveling to and from their homes and workplaces. Name your plugin appropriately. The example shown here is called Transit Carbon Demo. As a standard, it has one class for the plugin itself and one class for the empty command, called Calculate Transit Carbon. To add UMI functionality, we first need to add UMI as a dependency to the project. In the Solution Explorer, right-click References and choose Add Reference. Click on Browse and navigate to the UMI installation directory in C UMI. Select UMI.core.dll and UMI.rhino.dll and add them to the project. You'll also need to right-click the project, go to Properties, and make sure in the Application tab that Target Framework is set to at least .NET Framework 4.5. We're now ready to begin adding UMI functionality to our command, Calculate Transit Carbon. What we want to do in this command is when it is run, go through each building in the current UMI project, find its occupancy, and multiply that occupancy by a constant factor to gain the transit carbon. This is an extremely simplified model, but it's only for demonstration purposes. UMI's buildings, as well as any other information in an UMI project you wish to access, is all stored in what's called an UMI context object. And UMI context.current has the current context object, similar to rhinodoc.activedoc. You'll notice there's some red squigglies here because we haven't imported the correct namespaces to use this object yet. If you hit control period, a menu will pop up to automatically import them. This is a very common technique that will be used throughout the demonstrations. If no UMI project is loaded when the command is run, then this context object will be null. You should always check for this in your commands. If no UMI project is loaded, this way you can uh, provide a proper error messages to users. If the context object is not null, that means the project is loaded and we can get its buildings. You can either get all of the project's buildings or only the project's visible buildings, that is, the buildings that have not been hidden. Each building object has a lot of interesting properties. It has the floor count, the floor-to-floor -to -floor height, the geometry, all sorts of the things you would expect in an UMI building definition. What we care about is occupancy. Some buildings won't have occupancies. This can happen if a building has malformed geometry or no template definition. So you should always check if you're going to use the occupancy whether it's actually present. Again, we'll be multiplying this occupancy by a constant factor, here 1500. Then, we simply write that information to the Rhino console. The building name is another easily accessible property in the building object. OK, let's run it in Rhino and see if it works. First, verify that your command works correctly, even if no UMI project is loaded. Looks good. Now let's create a new project to test. We'll create a couple of buildings. Let's make this one retail. Give them names. This can be an office building. Now let's try our command. Looks like it did what we wanted. Notice that if you change the floor to the floor distance of one of these buildings, its occupancy will change. 
which means that the transit carbon should also change. Yep, the office went from 114,000 to 76,500. That's the end of the first tutorial. In this tutorial, you learned how to access basic UMI project data. In the next tutorial, we'll discuss how to have your plugin store and load custom settings inside the UMI bundle.